Hi, welcome to our next video on simple linear regression. On this video, we will be talking about model fit. We will start this video by talking about some things that we simply cannot explain. What I'm showing you is a plot with a horizontal axis for the x values and a vertical axis for the y values. If we have a series of x and y pairs and plot them in this scatter plot, we see that they have an upward trend. So, to some extent, as x grows, y is growing as well. And we could use this insight to develop a model, in particular a simple linear regression model, that draws a straight line that best represents this overall trend. So we estimate an intercept and a slope, and we have a linear regression output here. However, note that the observations do not lie over the straight line. There are small distances from the observations to the actual model which means the model does not entirely reflect reality and there is an error here. And this is why we have an error term in our simple regression models. So what we have here is a Y that represents that that is real. There's a model that systematically explains the variation in Y, meaning that we're using the variation in X to explain variation in Y, but there's also a portion of the variation that we cannot explain that is expressed in the error term. So when we're talking about model fit, what we're asking is, how well does our model fit the reality? And the way we're going to assess this is by comparing the variance that we can explain relative to the variance we cannot explain. And for this, it is useful to do a little algebra. Remember that this is our model, and we want to evaluate the variance in Y. So we can compute the variance of the entire expression. And let's open up what we have on the right-hand side, and it's going to look somewhat like this. Let's take it slowly. The first term is the variance of the intercept, which is a constant. By definition, a constant stays equal regardless of the observations, so the variance is going to be zero, and we can take this term out. Then we have the explained variance by the beta times x, and the variance of the error term. And we additionally have a covariance of these two terms. This is by how we compute the variance of the sum of two random variables. However, let's recall what these two terms are. One is the variance we can explain, and whatever is left is what we cannot explain, meaning that the two terms are not related to each other at all by definition. And in fact, we will see later how if there is some correlation between these two, our estimates from the regression are going to be biased. But we will assume for now that this term is also zero because what we can explain and what we cannot explain are not correlated, so that term cancels out, and we are left with a very simple expression of the variance of beta times x plus the variance of the error term. We will evaluate our model's fit using two metrics, the first of which is the r-squared. The r-squared is found by computing the proportion of the variation in y that is explained by the systematic portion of the model, that is, by the beta times x's. So, recalling this is the expression for the variance of our dependent variable, we will simply compute the ratio of the explained variance by the beta times x over the total variance of the dependent variable, the variance of y. And since this is a ratio, it's going to fluctuate between 0 and 1. Having a 0 in this proportion means that our model is not explaining anything. The explained variance is nothing relative to the total variance. Meanwhile, if our r squared is 1, or at least close to 1, this means our model is explaining everything. Now this might be better observed graphically. I will show you a series of plots of x's and y's of regressions with different r-squareds. Here you can note that in this regression with an r-squared very close to 1, very close to 100%, an r-squared of 99%. The observations pretty much lie over the fitted values that come out from our model. In a model where there would be a greater variance across the y's, and that we cannot explain it, our r-square is going to drop. In this case, we have an r-squared of 90%. And note that the distance between the observations and our fitted values are greater than in the prior model. As the r-square decreases, in this case we have an 80%, the distance continues growing. We now show you a 63, 64%, 53%, and note how interesting it looks if you have a 16%. There's pretty much no association between the x's and the y's which means that we cannot really use the variation in x to explain appropriately the variation in y. Now, let's go back to our old example in which we were regressing consumption on income. 
And what we meant by disregression is that we were using the variance in income to explain variance in consumption. And again, we have a line with the fitted values and dots for the observations. Try to guess what the R squared of this model is. Visually, it's nearly impossible, really. But the statistical packages such as Gretel give us this value. This is the regression result. And you can see that in the lower section of the output, which we had previously ignored, Gretel reports the R squared. And in this case, we have an R squared of 88.19%, which in general terms is fairly good. However, an important side note is necessary here. The R squared on its own will not really tell us if a model is good or bad. There are going to be different types of statistical models where the R squared might be even meaningless. However, if we have two models, we can compare their R squared, and the one with the greatest R squared is better explaining the variance in the dependent variable, which is what we want. So overall, we're going to be generally choosing the models with the higher R squared. The second metric to evaluate the model's fit is called the regression standard error. The regression standard error is related to the variance of the error term. Recall this is the variance we cannot explain of the dependent variable by using our model. So overall, we want to minimize this because we want to leave the least possible unexplained. What the regression standard error is going to capture is the variance in this error term, the unexplained variance of the dependent variable, by estimating the standard deviation of the error term. Now, the computation is not exactly as that we've seen in some equations, but it's very similar, and overall it represents the same thing. It's the variance in the error term that we want to minimize. Let's now look at the examples we had before, but in addition to reporting the R-squared, let's report the standard error, which I show in the upper right corner of the plots. This was the model with a very high R-squared, and it has a very low standard error of 1.22. As we start running models that do not explain the variance as well, the R-squared continues lowering, and note that the standard error grows. Now it's a 4.64. It grows to a 5, to a 10, and as we continue advancing, we note that the less it is able to explain the variance in the dependent variable, the higher the standard error of the regression is going to be. Once again, this is output that Gretel and any other statistical package will also give you. And in our example, the standard error of the regression is 3.73. Once again, this number on its own tells us little, but if we compare two linear models, we will generally be choosing the one with the smallest standard error. Let's summarize. By model fit, we're talking about how well does our model fit the reality. And in general, what we want to do is explain the variance in the dependent variable, explain the variance in y. There's a portion of our model that leverages the variance in the x's that explains this variance, but we also have a variance in the error term, which is the unexplained portion of the variance. The R squared is the proportion of the variance in Y that is explained by the variance in the X's, and we want to maximize it. And this is nothing more than a ratio of these two parameters that we want to get as close to one as possible. Meanwhile, the regression standard error is the variance of the error term, and we want to minimize it. We will always choose the model with the smallest regression standard error. Thank you very much.